I'm Stefan Bauman. I would like to invite you on a special journey. A journey to discover the splendor, encounter the grandeur, and feel the excitement of painting outdoors. Make this year the year to finally take your art to the next level. Come along with me as we experience the thrill of painting outdoors. If you have painted on location before, or this will be your first time, you will find the answers in this three-day workshop. It's a three-day workshop that will change your art forever. In one of America's most stunning locations, Mount Shasta. Everything you need to know is on our website at www.stephanbauman.com or just give me a call at 415-606-9074 and register for the workshop today. I'm Stefan Bauman and welcome to another Bauman video. Today we're going to have an opportunity to discuss something that is on everybody's mind and that is what is art and why do we do it? And above all, what is it that we should paint? These are questions that students ask me all the time, especially when I go to art groups. We also have insights on nuance painting, which is a fabulous technique that will take you from ordinary to extraordinary and break through some barriers or even break through some breakdowns in your art. So stay tuned. But before we do that, I want you to watch this little video that I did. I don't know if you know that I actually wrote a book and I did a little video on it. So watch this for a few minutes. I know, I know you hate commercials. I get it. But this may change your life. So watch this, and afterwards it will go immediately into the video. And thanks for joining us, and at the other end of this long video, I'll be back. I'm Stefan Bauman, and I would love to introduce you to a new book that I just wrote on plein air painting. After 40 years, I finally sat down with one of the best authors that I could possibly imagine for this project and put together everything I know about painting outdoors. And this isn't just an outdoor painting book, no. These are techniques that you can bring into the studio and they apply to watercolors, acrylics, gouache, and oil. You will be amazed at what you will learn with every turn of the page, every paragraph. We have worked through my videos, my information, my books, my blogs, and brought it all together. And over two years of editing, we brought it down to just the facts. This painting book has over 400 pages and almost 500 illustrations. If you see my video, and if you read my blog, and you follow me on YouTube, you know that there's a lot of information. There's a lot of things you don't know that you don't know. I'm amazed at the quality of this book, the pages. It's a field guide. It's a book that you would take outdoors with you and paint on location. It's been organized so you could find your way through my keys. This book explains 40 years of teaching and knowledge one-on-one. -on -one. All the information that I possibly know about painting is in this book. So run, don't walk, and order this book today. Get this book, it's awesome! I have students that end up saying, but I don't know what to paint. And you know, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy when I hear that from people. I go, what do you mean you don't know what you want to paint? The whole idea behind painting is that you want to express or share things with people. I mean, we think about, we think about well, paintings as, as a calendar picture, but our whole life is a painting. And the whole thing that I try to teach when I'm coaching is that you want to paint your life, your things that interest you. If I tell you to paint a night scene, I want you to just go to outside and paint a night scene. Nothing has to be special. We don't have to find the perfect painting to paint. You could make anything to a painting as long as you're attracted to it. And seriously, if I give you homework assignments, they're my interest. You know, if I tell 
people, I want you to take something and wrap it in foil and put an orange next to it and, and get some kind of highlight out of it. That's my idea. That's what I want to do. The whole, I want you to be creative. I want you to come out, think out of the box. I mean, it's the, we could actually say, so what is that we want to paint? And that would be a question, that would be a viable question. It's like, so what to paint? What, you know, what is a painting? Why do we paint? You know, painting is communication. Yeah, why do we read a book? Why do we, you know, why do you read this book? You read that book because it, it's a conversation. I, I cover conversations, I mention something, you read it, hopefully it stimulates a question, you answer back. But really art is communication. And it, it, if you have something to say, and one of the most beautiful things that you can say is your life. And when I have students and when I coach them, I have them do a glass of water and then the next one's the eggs. And any of you that have done my coaching, it's like, you know, this is just the basic six. So if you're, if you're nervous about coaching, you don't have to be great. You don't have to be special. You just have to get through these few paints. Uh, I have, a, I have a, a water glass, an egg. After the egg, we have donuts then I have you do something that's really special for you. And it's, it's special in a way that you can, it should connect with you, your children, something's very personal to you. In fact, that really should be one of our homework assignments, but something that would be like a legacy. So, you know, if you have children, it would be something that you would paint that you would want them to own, that you would have them pass on to somebody else. Oftentimes a childhood toy is a really good place to start. A childhood uh, memory that you have with the children. So, you know, as they get older and they go off to college or another house, or, you know, or that's the toy that I used to play with. And it's like, wow, that really touched by you doing that. And that's kind of what makes things really special, is that you have a connection with somebody um, and it just doesn't become painting things. I mean, and that's why I say, don't paint things. Don't paint a poinsettia. Paint something that people can relate to. So like a poinsettia is, yeah, everybody's memory. But the thing is, what makes it awesome is an unusual effect of light that makes it memorable. The brain stores things via memory. The brain, the brain uh, you know, it stores things by unique things that happen. So when you see like a, a poinsettia and you see it again and again and again, the one you're going to remember is the poinsettia that's actually beautifully lit. That moment where you see something that's extraordinary. Um, yeah, a lot of times people will decorate things and yeah, it's really beautiful to, to see, but if it's specially decorated, it's even more enchanting. And then the brain kind of, re, uh, kind of deletes all other subject matter related to that subject matter. The, the, the brain deletes all other poinsettias and now replaces it with this really awesome one. And now you've got one memory of a poinsettia and it's kind of like delete, delete, delete. It's funny, your computer works just like your brain does. So, uh, you know, when you finally are like looking through pictures, you go, oh, there's a redwood painting. There's another scene of redwoods. And then you, all of a sudden you find the redwood. It's like, oh, and then all the other ones don't compare. And you kind of delete them or forget about them. And so when you're creating art, you want to be creating something that attaches to people. And then you want to go further by making it extraordinary. And most of the time, the brain will remember uh, the effect of light. It will remember how things uh, smell also. You know, the scent. So if I ask you to remember a scent in your past, you can almost recall a place because the brain stores that way and light is one of our things. But things that really are connected to us, like children's memories, the toys that we used to play with, that's when it becomes extraordinary. So using light to generate a memory is really, you know, is good. Like Martha Stewart says, it's a good thing. Uh, the reason why you do something under an hour and why it's important to kind of learn to do that under an hour is you want to uh, get a start on a painting. Now, 
when people are traveling, when they go to Europe and they, they you know, take their paintings with them, it's like, lo and behold, uh, you don't get a lot of time to paint. And had you not actually started a painting like this, you probably wouldn't even think about doing it in the first place. So you darting out and, and taking a, a, a shot at doing something in a very short period of time caused you to actually come back with something that you will probably finish, or at least think about finishing the tower. Another thing too is that when you're doing a painting under an hour, the first and most important thing to do is get the gesture drawing in. So the gesture drawing is the drawing of this, the, the scene very quickly. So when we do a drawing of, of figures in a figure drawing class, we do a gesture. And a gesture basically shows you where the head is, where the feet are, where the shoulders are, where the hands go. And it's a 30 second drawing that gets you a feeling for what the concept is. Is the concept gonna fit in my, in my space? Yeah. One of the tricks that I tell people when you come to a workshop is to take your, your camera which everybody now has, um, but your smartphone and take a picture of it and edit it on your camera first and then use your camera to draw onto your canvas. That's the quickest way to avoid lots of mistakes. You know, or I might want to make it a horizontal. You can very quickly turn the camera, you can edit it very quickly and then save it then this sounds counterintuitive, but it is a trick to get you started, is draw from your camera. Actually hold your camera up and draw from that. Yeah, that's gonna save hours of time. You're gonna be able to paint faster under an hour. And draw that there and correct it and edit on your camera and draw it exactly there. Then put your camera away. You have a hard enough time trying to learn how to do the plein air painting part. And when you have a really bad beginning, it's not a fun trip. If you at least start off with a decent drawing, you're going to learn how to nail this in the process of editing this. I mean, you know, a lot of times I tell people, do this. Oh, that's a trick. No, it's not a trick. Use a prospect because it will teach you how to get proportions. It's not a trick. A trick? You want to know a trick? An opaque projector is a trick. An opaque projector has no value in a studio. You will never learn anything. Gritting your paintings is, is useless. Working on a grid is never going to teach you how to draw. But taking your picture and learning how to edit it and getting, oh, that's a better picture than I thought. You're going to learn how to edit paintings and eventually you don't need to use your camera. So use it now as a tool for learning, but eventually you'll be able to sit out there because you've edited, 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 edited. You'll be able to edit your painting and, and have these mistakes uh, taken out. Oh, Nuance Painting is uh, a chapter in my book. <laughs> um, no, Nuance Painting is a way of painting that has you work with no ideas. So when students come to me and they're in an artist block or they don't know what to paint, what I suggest to do is to start covering your canvas. And there's a way of doing it where if it's a canvas canvas, you want to add some turpentine to the canvas or some oil so it doesn't dry too quickly or stick to the canvas. If it's a board or an oil prime canvas, it has a it has a tendency to repel paint for a while before it connects. But nuance painting is kind of like watching clouds. So you start pushing paint on the canvas with no idea in your head. And you start watching whatever happens in the painting. So um, the early Chinese artists that did Chinese brush painting, uh, they would hold the brush this way in their hand like this, pointing upwards to the gods. There we go, so upwards to the gods. And they would hold it there so that the gods would make the movement and you were just there as a bystander. 
And when the gods kind of gave you a nuance of something, a leaf, a line of a dress or something, it was up to you to catch that and then go further with it. So it's kind of uh, some of my Chinese brush painting uh, techniques coming into oils. And so you put painting paint on there and then whatever your brain starts to kind of see. And a lot of times when artists are having artist block, it's like it, you're trying to get in touch with your nature or whatever. And a lot of times if you're into horses, all of a sudden you'll start seeing horses. Other people will see teddy bears. Some people will see paintings that are um, maybe a little bit abstract. But it's kind of like whatever starts to appear on the canvas, you kind of run with it. And, but the reality is, is at the end, you start seeing things that are close to you. Like, you know, if you're into horses, you'll start seeing horses, for instance. And it might be one, it might be a herd of horses. Where are they standing? They're standing on the field, maybe on some rocks, maybe they're running. Whatever you kind of start to play with, you start developing off of that nuance. Now, the key to this point is, is that if you're more of a beginner painter, you can't just run with it because it, you know, you don't have the ability and the knowledge subconsciously to fill it out. So you can kind of see the horses, you can kind of make them out. But if you've never studied horses, the proportions are crucial. If you've never studied horses, you know, the, uh, their relationship to a horizon line is crucial. So at that point, what you do is you have Google and you Google horses, what, horses standing, horses running, horses on the edge of a cliff. And you start looking for horses that you can transplant onto your painting and start getting uh, more facts. But it's all started from nothing. So you just work with nuances of color at first. And mainly you use asphaltum with turpentine, asphaltum and ultramarine blue with turpentine, usually a warm color because shadows are warm. You want to start building something up with warm tones, working with a limited palette. The reason why you want to be on a MDF board with auto primer or oil primer or canvases with oil primer or wet your gesso primer so it doesn't stick is that once you get all the nuances in and you push them around, then what you do is you take a paper towel and you start wiping off the highlights and you can start getting the highlights in before you start drawing your image so you can get the idea of what kind of lighting happens in there. So the paint needs to be pliable and pushable and wipeable so that you can get all of those things in there. So it is fun. It's like sometimes you do it with a doodle. So if you look at my videos on doodling your way to become great painters, I mean, oftentimes when you're doodling, you're like doodle, 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 doodle. And all of a sudden you go, oh my God, it's starting to look like a duck. I'm going to start putting the neck in. I'm going to start putting the head in. I'm going to start putting the feet in. So, you know, it's kind of like doodling or automatic drawing. So. I told you that was a lot of information. And I don't know if you know this, but I've got like over 300 videos out there on YouTube that you can learn this kind of information. And you can watch all the videos that you want, but let's face it. If you really want to get good at painting, you're going to have to get a coach. Michael Jordan had a coach. Tiger Woods had a coach. And if you think that you're going to do this by watching a bunch of videos, you ain't going to get anywhere really quickly. You've been painting at this for years. Let's make this year the year that you really change your art forever. And pick up the phone and give me a call for coaching. I opened up a couple of new times for coaching. Uh, just primarily because I get so many requests and grab one of those new spots that I have and give it a try. It doesn't cost a lot. You've been wanting to be an artist since you were four years old. Isn't it about time you're a grown up now? Let's become an artist. Work with somebody. Pick up, and even if it's not me, you need to find a coach. So just try it. Give it a call. Try it for a month. See if you like it. It's going to change the way your approach, everything about painting is going to change the moment you pick up that call. And you're going to realize that you're going to be glad you did it. Don't wait till you're good enough because the opportunities pass. This is the time. Do it. Try to do something that will truly make a difference. I don't ask you to do homework projects and have you do color charts. Those artists don't have anything to offer. I don't tell you to do uh, pencil cones and value studies. 
Those are not the way to learn how to paint. The only way you're going to learn how to paint is to have somebody look at your work, say, keep on doing this, but stop doing that. That's the way you're going to get somewhere. Don't waste your time with ateliers and art classes by teachers who don't even talk or look at your work. There's a lot of those programs out there. You work with me one-on-one, -on -one, not an assistant, not a secondary client. You'll work with me directly and you will see how quickly your art will change and you will be inspired to think that this is the year that you quite possibly you're going to reach that dream that you had when you were four and that you're going to be an artist. Don't waste your time. Give me a call. If that's just too much for you to do, I have a book on painting outdoors that you can buy and, and this is great. All the information you need is in here and you can learn from this a lot. There's a lot of misnomers out there, people teaching art that don't really know the practical application of what they say. So you could get information there, work with coaching. But if that's too intrusive, then maybe try my Patreon. All of this information is on my website at www.stephanbauman.com. And I know this sounds like an infomercial, but I really do want you to become an artist. I want to work with you. I want to show you how amazing it is to be an artist full time in your head, in your family, in your life. It is truly a life-changing environment. If you want more information, you can go to my website at www.stephanbauman.com. There you can actually even get a free book on painting, but all this is all based on ultimately you and your painting. And Churchill said it takes two artists to paint a painting. One to paint it, the other one to hit him over the head to tell him when it's done. Well, I'm that guy. So give me a call, 415-606-9074. Start painting with passion. I'm Stefan Bauman, and I would love to introduce you to a new book that I just wrote on plein air painting. After 40 years, I finally sat down with one of the best authors that I could possibly imagine for this project and put together everything I know about painting outdoors. And this isn't just an outdoor painting book, no. These are techniques that you can bring into the studio and they apply to watercolors, acrylics, gouache, and oil. You will be amazed at what you will learn with every turn of the page, every paragraph. We have worked through my videos, my information, my books, my blogs, and brought it all together. And over two years of editing, we brought it down to just the facts. This painting book has over 400 pages and almost 500 illustrations. If you see my videos, and if you read my blog, and you follow me on YouTube, you know that there's a lot of information. There's a lot of things you don't know that you don't know. I'm amazed at the quality of this book, the pages. It's a field guide. It's a book that you would take outdoors with you and paint on location. It's been organized so you could find your way through my keys. This book explains 40 years of teaching and knowledge one-on-one. -on -one. All the information that I possibly know about painting is in this book. So run, don't walk, and order this book today. Get this book. It's awesome!